Welcome to another episode of Delver, the weekly show where we take a look at the biggest news stories in Magic the Gathering. And we've got a couple interesting ones for you today. Some that I would love your opinions on. How do you feel about them as Magic the Gathering players and fans? Um, we love to hear other people's opinions and talk about the news and the events that are going on uh, throughout this game that we love. So we've got a few items uh, on the stack today and we will jump into them right away. The first one's a little bit of a small piece of news, but it's very interesting to me. Um, so Moxfield, which is the amazing deck building website and um, card sharing platform that allows people to share decks, comment on decks, tweak decks. Um, I'm a big proponent of Moxfield. I spend a lot of time um, putting my decks into Moxfield to make sure that I'm able to share them with other people. Um, it's a fantastic tool. You can play test uh, inside Moxfield. You can buy directly from major retailers. You can check out different card printings. It's it's a very intuitive tool. You can see layouts of what mana is. You can test hands. You can also buy sleeves to to protect your deck. I think Moxfield is one of those tools that's very obviously player centric, made by players, and people really love it. I think that there's a little bit of crossover between like this and Scryfall and obviously MTG Goldfish. But the news broke uh, this week that the deck building website Moxfield will be announcing and launching its own social media network. Um, if you are not familiar with all of the news going on with Twitter, which is kind of where Magic the Gathering players have been gathering for lack of a better word um for the better part of you know a decade a twitter is has a tumultuous future and there's not a lot of certainty as to how long twitter is going to stick around so that being said people are trying to decipher where to go where's the best place to facilitate magic content creators where's the best place to facilitate you know just magic fans and players where we can all kind of gather and continue these conversations continue celebrating one another and talking about new cards and and discussing this hobby and game that we all love uh in a safe environment twitter uh, has has a new owner and they're making some changes internally that has made the platform a little volatile. So the future is um, in question and you know, Moxfield has been stepping up. This news uh, article is on bleedingcool.com and it reads uh, with all the hubbub going around surrounding Twitter, um, people have been considering the options on where to go and social network site ever crumbles. November 11th, the owners of Moxfield, a site where Magic players can go to submit their deck lists and provide commentary and advice on the decks of their peers, announced their intentions to create their own social network for players of the game. According to a press release we received by Harry Finocciaro and John Tull, the Moxfield owners, uh, Moxfield is excited to announce our latest initiative to create a social network platform for Magic the Gathering. In order to accomplish this, we're working to, on incorporating a feed onto the homepage, a way to post content outside of the context of a deck, and a way to safely moderate it all. We believe that in order to succeed, we'll also need to enhance the experience with the new native mobile app and push notifications. We publicly announced our intentions for this initiative on Twitter uh, on Friday, November 11th. However, we need much more time in order to complete such a large undertaking. We're hoping to launch in the first half of 2023, but we are unable to make any promises due to the size and the nature of the company. We've received a lot of questions over the weekend and think that these points are worth mentioning. No, okay, point one, this won't be a new site. It will be new features building on top of what we already offer. This means users will still enjoy the same preferences like dark mode, notification settings, etc. Point two, we will not be doing a verification program. But imitation accounts are a violation of our terms and services. 
We already have a feature where Patreon accounts get a badge next to their usernames. And the third point is we will not be selling user data, but advertising will continue as it's already a large part of keeping the site up and running. Uh, when this announcement was made, the Magic community on Twitter became a buzz with discussion and perhaps more importantly, hope. I think this is really cool. Um, again, I'm a huge fan of Moxfield. I want to continue to cultivate these relationships with people in this community, um, share content that we're making here on this channel and, you know, generally have a good time talking about magic, the gathering. And I think that having Moxfield and a social network kind of merge into one is, is the best of both worlds. I personally have not done a ton of research on Moxfield as it pertains to the people, the owners. Um, I know that there's a lot of appreciation and hearty stock put into this company from Magic the Gathering players uh, based on the Moxfield name and the proprietors of the company. So here's to hoping that it comes out and it works well and some some or all of the people that we talk to on a, a daily basis or more uh, can migrate over safely and heaven forbid twitter shuts down but at least we'll have a nice and safe place to to talk and share magic the gathering uh, our second news story comes out of wizards itself um They've announced the MagicCon Philadelphia and the 2023 MagicCon schedule. So this came out on November 10th, shortly after the weekly MTG stream. Um, and it kind of goes into detail about the year ahead. Everyone's kind of excited about the gathering part of Magic again. And in October, we saw Magic 30, which was a giant event, a big party. Plus, it culminated uh, with the... 2022 world championship or magic world championship 28 i believe anyway people had a great time getting together and playing and talking about magic so obviously wizards of the coast wants to ensure that people remain excited about the future and and now that um people have gotten a taste for attending events again they wanted to obviously promote the year ahead so Magic 30 was just the beginning. February 17th to 19th, 2023, all will gather at Magic Con Philadelphia. I mean, all aren't going to gather because they have limited tickets and the Magic 30 tickets sold out in like five minutes. So I don't think all will gather. Uh, with the kickoff for Magic 30, 30th anniversary celebrations in the books, we're turning our attention to Magic Con, our new festival event series that further celebrates magic four more times in 2023. Magic 20, Magic 30 was an amazing experience with 10,000 attendees and we're making our gathering in Philadelphia even better. Doesn't that make people who went and spent all that money to go to Magic 30 feel bad that the random Philadelphia one is going to be better? So tickets are going on sale uh, December 1st and they will be at um, mtgfestivals.com. In the meantime, read further to learn more information about. And then there's some some links to other programs and festival events. Um, basically, MagicCon is going to be a convention centered around Magic the Gathering, obviously, with a little bit of a focus on competitive, but mostly a focus on the people, the players, the game, the casual formats. I think a lot of people went to Magic 30 and had a great time playing on commander tables, meeting random people, going to panels, um, talking to and meeting, you know, celebrity content creators. I think that Magic Con is the safest way to go about magic events in the future. As much as I would love to just have, you know, pro tour events, events that strictly hold competitive magic i think having a magic con and inserting part of the schedule um, or inserting the esports side of it into part of the schedule is is just the safest bet there's going to be you know 
85 to 90 percent of the people that go there aren't going to care about the competitive side of magic um and that's going to sell tickets that's going to you know sell merchandise sell cards it's going to bring in more vendors it's going to bring in more advertisers it's going to bring in more celebrities uh there's a video here that i will link in the video description below this is the just the vod from uh weekly mtg Um, the first big change is that Philadelphia will be big as in double the space of Las Vegas. So one of the problems that I heard from other people going to Vegas for Magic 30 was that the convention space that they got for the event wasn't that big. It was, it was large. It was a big space, but it could have been bigger. Um, and obviously that limits the amount of tickets they can sell that limits the amount of, you know, hotel reservations that they can partner with, uh, local hotels for. Um, so ultimately it means less people can come if they don't have enough space. So Philadelphia being double the space as Vegas, um, is pretty exciting because that means that hopefully they'll have double the tickets, double the capacity and, some of the people that missed out on the Vegas event will be able to go to Philadelphia. Um, again, these tickets go on sale on December 1st, and we can take a look at the tickets in just one sec. But for the rest of the news is that um, the entire 2023 Magic Con schedule has been announced alongside Philadelphia. Um, and there's gonna be four headline events throughout the calendar year. Obviously, February has uh, MagicCon Philadelphia. Then in May, they're doing MagicCon Minneapolis. Uh, in July, so the summer, they're doing MagicCon in Europe. And then in September, which is a month earlier than um, it was this year, they're doing MagicCon Las Vegas again, which also will host the Magic World Championship. So this is really cool. I think that uh, you know having a look at the entire year ahead is awesome. I think that, you know, again, magic cons are the way to go and I'm excited to try to attend uh, one of these. Hopefully uh, September's in Las Vegas would be, would be great. Um, maybe even catch a football game while we're there now that they have a football team. There's a new Perspectives grant program uh, aims to support the inclusion of magic enthusiasts who belong to historically underrepresented groups by providing assistance to attend magic events. Um, so this is a kind of a group that helps um, people from underrepresented groups uh, attend these events, whether it be financial assistance or, you know, free tickets um, basically what they're trying to do is disperse the traditional nerdy crowd and try to make it so that everyone feels more invited and included i think there's a lot of really unique magic content creators there's lots of really unique magic competitive players but ultimately this game is played by millions of people and there's been uh, a significant lack of celebrating the diversity of this player base. And I think any, any brand, any product should be kind of focusing on that moving forward. And the New Perspectives grants um, seems like a great program if it's done well. And I hope that Wizards is putting time and effort into that. And then they talk a little bit about their... Um, cosplay contest for magic 30 who which saw dark pack cosplay this amazing ashiok cosplay win first prize which is awesome um that's really cool and then there's ticket packages okay they're just gonna run into ticket prices here so we don't have to look at the ticket website uh so single day packages are gonna be 60 dollars um and you get a Oil Arcane Signet promo, a Mystery Booster Convention Edition, and three Phyrexia All Will Be One Draft Boosters because this is coming out around the same time as the next uh, Magic set, which is in February. 
Then there's going to be kids single day packages for $20. Uh, this does not again say what qualifies as a kid. Oh, kids age six to 12, children five and under do not need a ticket to attend. Okay, so six to 12, uh, you get a kid's ticket for 20 bucks for a single day, and then anyone 13 and over, it is a $60 ticket. And then there's full weekend packages. Um, the basic weekend package is 160 bucks, which feels okay. It's expensive. Um, luckily, because Vegas is cheap to get to, but it's not cheap to be at. Whereas Philadelphia is probably a little bit cheaper to be at. Uh, hotel pricing, hotel options, everything in Vegas is designed to kind of take advantage of the people, the types of people that come there, the the amount of time people spend there, the amount of act or the type of activities people do when they go there. So it's it's a little bit more upper class, fake upper class, because they can charge more for a hotel room if they make their hotel rooms look like Rome or whatever. It's it's fake classy in order to advertise and bring in more uh, diverse wallet sizes. Um, so the weekend package being $160 for an entire weekend, which I believe will both be three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, hopefully your hotel room or your stay in Philadelphia is not too expensive. So maybe double this um, like Right now, it's it's probably about a hundred and eighty to two hundred dollars a night to stay at a decent hotel in Vancouver, where I'm at. So, I would just estimate that a weekend package or weekend stay in Philadelphia would be a little bit less than that, hundred and fifty dollars a night, maybe. So, I would triple that for three days. That's. Uh, $450 plus 160 for the weekend package. It's less than a grand, whereas, you know, Vegas would have been far more expensive to do the whole weekend. Um, and then there's a kids weekend package. Oh, so you also get the convention edition booster and six Phyrexia boosters rather than just three from the single day packages. Uh, and then you get a Philadelphia Attracts a Playmat, which Sounds pretty cool. Uh, there's a kids weekend package for $50 for all three days. And then there's some VIP packages, which are going to get um, pretty crazy. Commander VIP package is 350 Gives you access to the command zone uh, all weekend. And then Black Lotus VIP package, which is even more expensive. Uh, gets you the play mat, the deck box, the sleeves, the the exclusive secret layer for Philadelphia, the command zone access, the um, party pass, the VIP lounge, the event pin, um, add on tickets. So you can buy tickets to just the party for 50 bucks, or you can buy just command zone access for $30 a day. And yeah, so December 1st is going to be, uh, for those looking to apply for the Art of Magic dealership, I believe it's just going to be like an artist alley, like a normal convention. Then there's uh, content creators, press, exhibitors. Um, December 1st is Magic Con, Philadelphia badges on sale, as well as full tournament schedule and event pre-registration. And then... February 17th to 19th, Philadelphia takes place at Pennsylvania Convention Center. Pretty cool. And then here's some of the look at the you know, play mats, the deck boxes, the sleeves, the Convention Edition Arcane Signet, which is going to be cool, and the four Secret Lair cat cards that you will get if you buy, I believe, the oldest, the oldest, the most expensive of the packages. So it's really cool. I really hope that like this was MTG Summit, which was going on this last weekend. A lot of people attended. A lot of people were having a great time. Events like this are coming back to Magic the Gathering, and this is a very good thing. Um, obviously, Wizard wants to to promote this and, and grow this 
these gatherings as much as they can. So having four on the schedule for 2023 where we can all attend and and celebrate magic is, is really great. The last thing I wanted to go over for the week was that Bank of America has come out to state that um, Hasbro could fall 34% due to company ruining Magic the Gathering card game. Now, this article is currently locked, which is difficult. Uh, it wasn't locked a moment ago. So let me just find a different one. Bank of America. That's CNBC. Investing.com. Um, shares of Hasbro NASDAQ are down more than 6% in pre-open Monday trading after Bank of America double downgraded to underperform from buy. It was at buy before the weekend, then it opened on Monday at a double downgrade. Goes all the way from buy to underperforming. Um, as a result of the firm's deep dive in the company's business, Magic the Gathering. The price target is slashed... Oh, pop-ups. The price target is slashed to $42 per share from $72 per share, implying a downside risk of over 30% relative to Friday's closing price of $63.41. So I'm not a, a crazy big stock person. Um, I know these are all bad things. I'm more interested in, in as to why. Um... And I think that the statement from Bank of America went into why. We've spoken with several players, collectors. Uh, okay, who... Who is Haas? Ba -ba -ba. The primary concern is that Hasbro has been overproducing magic cards which has propped up Hasbro's recent result, but is destroying the long-term value of the brand. Uh, this states that Magic the Gathering, which is a trading card game, generates about 15% of Hasbro's total revenue and as much as 35% of the holdings company. Players can't keep up, and the increasing switch to Commander format, which allows older cards to be used, uh, the increased supply has crashed secondary market prices, which has caused distributors, collectors, and local game stores to lose money on Magic. As a result, we expect they'll order less product in future releases. Moreover, uh, they noted that the price for the Magic 30th anniversary set, set at $999 for four booster packs, is excessively high. So basically what they're stating is that Magic is or Hasbro has been pricing a lot of people out of Magic the Gathering, overproducing cards because they want, they think our appetite is completely insatiable. And the Bank of America, after doing their due diligence and research on Hasbro's practices as it pertains to the business of Magic the Gathering, is stating that they're doing too much and eventually that hunger will be satiated. And you need to dump or the stocks will underperform based on that. Because eventually we're going to get so full, we're not going to want to eat anymore. And there's a lot of evidence to, to support that. One was the major backlash on um, online regarding the... Regarding the... Magic 30th Anniversary Edition. I think that there's there's no speculating about how how much of a poor decision that felt like um, as far as the set prices and everything goes. So we've been feeling it for a while. There's been videos about 
this subject for years coming out, talking about burnout, talking about set releases. And, you know, this chart here gets brought up a lot where this is the last 30 years ish of uh, what Magic the Gathering has released um, since 1993 when it first came out to 2022. These are all of the sets and products that have been released as standalone products. And we're talking about, you know, secret layers are tacked on at the end here. Um, you know, 2022 has had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight commander products shipped or at least on the schedule. I believe this last one has not shipped yet. We've got booster products at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven booster products released in this calendar year. We've got one set that's illegal in tournament, which just so happens to be the most expensive set they've ever made. Um, we've got one joke set and then we've got one to non-booster products, 48 secret layers, and one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven digital only releases. So that is a lot of product. Obviously this chart is trending in a direction um, that can easily lead you to believe that next year 2023 is going to have even more magic products and i know that i was really hoping to get um a financial advisors or a stock market traders kind of take on this trend this double downgrade from the bank of america but i wasn't able to get someone to uh, respond in time and i think that I didn't, I didn't, I don't want to sit here and speculate because I'm not, uh, well enough versed in stock markets trading, um, what the bank of America sees and what they can control behind the scenes. So what I can only assume is that this is some, one of those moves that wizards of the coast will see Hasbro will note, will see this obviously because everyone's talking about it. Um, and they will change their production schedule moving forward in order to rebuy that faith and performance in stock. I think if a company loses all of its um, stock worth, then the company will go under and I would much rather have less magic than no magic. And I think that that's important. Uh, let's check out this Hasbro or this Polygon article, which is talking about the same thing. Um, analyst says that stock plummet stock plummets as analyst says Hasbro is killing its golden goose. Um, Hasbro is overproducing magic cards, which have popped up recent results, wrote research analyst Jason Haas. Card prices are falling, game stores are losing money, collectors are liquidating, and large retailers are cutting orders. Hasbro has recently touted the performance of its Wizards of the Coast business unit, which includes magic as well as Dungeons of the Dra Dungeon Dungeons and Dragons. Um, magic alone accounts for some 15% of Hasbro's annual revenue and some 35% of its annual earnings. Sales of the collectible card game nearly doubled over the pandemic, and Hasbro has urged that growth onwards with additional releases throughout 2021 and 2022. But Haas believes that the end of that growth curve is looming on the horizon, in part because Magic has grown primarily by extracting more revenue from each player rather than growing its player base. And that's something that, you know, goes hand in hand with that Magic content burnout. Like, we love to play this game we want new games we want to enjoy new magic all the time i think that's part of the fun of being in an ever-evolving landscape for a physical card game um, but there's a lot of time spent playing with old cards and t time spent playing with eternal formats time spent 
playing commander and game game modes that you know include the entire library of cards and extracting more revenue from each player rather than focusing on growing its player base is something that will quickly turn most people off i can't say for sure it's going to be all because there's going to be people that you know are devout and have some money even if they don't people are going to you know be irresponsible with their finances in order to maintain their um love and time with magic the gathering so it is not great is not good at all and i think that hasbro should be a little ashamed of themselves for you know take aiming their sights at the play, people already in the community rather than trying to convince people outside of the community to join because there's it's always fun talking to someone who's new to magic or teaching someone who's never played magic how to play talking them through the the history the gameplay the construction the all of it the lore it's always better to increase your player base than it is to siphon more from your player base um increased supply has crashed secondary markets expect there'll be less product in future releases so this is the conversation that the other article was quoting but didn't have who it was in the article um has called out magic 30 yep that's good local game stores already appear to be selling magic's latest expansion the brothers war at a loss on tcg player haas wrote the brothers war draft booster boxes are available now on tcg player for 107 and set boosters for 112 below a break even of 115 and 120 and that is telling i think they're these stores are concerned about holding on to stock that will never sell, so they're trying their hardest to sell it immediately. And that says something about, you know, the future of the stock, the future of the product. I think if more and more stores pull out of selling and carrying Magic the Gathering content, then we're going to be in for a rough time. Uh, while Magic has dedicated has a dedicated and sticky fan base we're concerned that continued overproduction of cards and declining secondary market values could push players and collectors into other trading card games such as pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh, and flesh of blood really interesting and at the same time there's a lot of articles coming out talking about flesh and blood and how they're really finding their core audience within their own community and celebrating that so it feels kind of bad that Hasbro's making these choices to, you know, pretend like their design deci design decisions and product focus is for our benefit, when all all of the people outside of uh, Hasbro can tell that it's for their benefit, and to have another company who's making an equally fantastic card game by the sounds of it i still have yet to play flesh and blood and i'm sorry um to have another community that is celebrating itself and having a great time while this community of 30 years has um you know hit a bit of a rough patch is is difficult i i expect a whole lot of people to not jump the fence but shift their focus to stuff like pokemon or flesh and blood i think that if hasbro and wizards of the coast continue down this train you're going to lose you know a large percentage of the middle to lower tier or lower size not lower tier lower sized content creators you're going to get people trying out other things in order to to satiate a need that they're not being heard by the company making the product that they're investing all this time and money into um, I hope this wakes them up. I hope that the success of Magic 30, uh, the event, not the booster packs. I hope the people excited about the Magic Con schedule. I hope MTG Summit, um, SCG Con. I hope all of these community-focused things 
really excites them, Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro, to refocus on celebrating rather than penny pinching and, you know, give us fewer, better products and focus less on, you know, getting more dollars out of the people who are already giving you dollars and focus more on inviting people to the table. Let's get as many people into this awesome community as we can. And I think that should be their focus. Hopefully this double downgrade um, by the Bank of America will shake their um, stakeholders up a little bit and open their eyes. And that is, is going to be it for uh, this episode of Delver. I hope that you enjoyed it. We're trying to, to maintain a bit of a length here. Um, I apologize if I'm not super happy or my words are, are stumbling a little bit today. I think that I'm still getting used to talking to an empty camera and, you know, having stern opinions on Magic the Gathering is one thing that I see a lot of in content creation and in every fandom is that, you know, there's a handful of people with really stern opinions and I tend to try to not solidify my opinions. I can be dissuaded or have my mind changed at any moment for any reason, depending on uh, the facts put in front of me. So I apologize if that comes out in a sort of unsure or mumbly sort of way. I'm just trying to look at the news and talk about this amazing thing that we're all here to talk about. Uh, if you have any suggestions uh, for ways to format the show, things specifically to look out for, where do you get your magic news? Is it all social media? Are you excited for any of these news stories? The Moxfield uh, social media site, the Magic Con schedule for 2023. Uh, do you have opinions on stocks plummeting? Um, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And a lot of people that watch these videos aren't subscribers yet. Um, and I appreciate it. I would appreciate it if you could subscribe. Uh, that way we can start getting um, more invites to things, start getting more um, access to, to special news, uh, early news, start being able to utilize this platform a little bit better. I'm not planning on taking anything I earn from this channel and putting it elsewhere. So this is something that I just want to keep putting all of this time and effort back into this channel so I can cultivate a fun and informational um, community. Again, thank you so much for all the people that watch these. I appreciate all of you and I hope to see you on the next one. And all of that news will resolve and I'll see you next week.